So hi guys, let's have a look at book cover creation tutorial using a KDP um, template. KDP is very easy. I've no doubt the other publishers have similar things, so it's just a matter of adjusting your template um, to your needs. We're using Affinity Publisher version 2 on the iPad. So the first thing we need in this tutorial is the KDP cover template. So let's go get one. Now here's the URL, couldn't be simpler. And you'll be faced with a page like that. And it's not terribly technical. You just follow the um, instructions there, fill in the details. So it's a paperback book, the binding type. The interior type is standard color. The paper type is white paper. The page turn direction, left to right. Measurement units, well I'm using inches, you may have some other need. Um, and the interior trim size, that's the physical size of the book as it sits on the shelf. Don't worry about measurements and things, but in this case I'm going to use 6x9. And it's 120 pages. Now, you might need to do a page count. Remember they're talking about pages here? so. If, you're, if you've got a novel, then it's probably, I don't know, 250, 320 pages long. A short story, 120 pages. You can work that out from your manuscript. Don't uh, create one that's undersized. You're better off creating one that's oversized if you have to do any guessing. Because it's, it's really easy later on to just drop in a new template and adjust your sizes pull everything in or, or push everything out because it really is only the spine width that changes. Everything else stays the same, but the number of pages, obviously a 320 page book is thicker than a 120 page book. So it's only your spine size that you need to adjust and your images and things around it, of course. But you'll see that momentarily. Just a note, as I said, don't stress over the page count too much. You can change that if needs be. It's used to calculate the spine thickness, and you can always apply a new adjusted template later. So, when ready, tap Calculate Dimensions. You've input everything, Calculate Dimensions. You'll now see your template layout. Front cover on the right, the spine, and the back cover on the left. You also have the exact measurements. Neat, huh? Now to download it. And you can see the instruction there, just under Calculate Dimensions. Because if you will need to make any changes, you can make them there and then click Calculate Dimensions again. When you're happy, download the template. Put the zip file somewhere you can find it easily. There's nothing worse than wandering around your computer trying to find where you've put the downloaded file. So, suggestion, use the Downloads folder. <laughs> And you can see what I've got there. Now it's paperback, 6x9, and 120 standard white English US size. Okay, it's 120 pages, 6x9, and paperback. Easy. The name of the document tells you what it is. Now what? There's your zip file containing your template. Double tap on it in the iPad to extract the files to a folder. It usually extracts it to a folder directly where it's sitting. And there are the templates in their own folder, neatly named so you know exactly which one you're using and the page count. One PDF file, one PNG file, and a README text file. Now we're going to use the top one of those three, which happens to be, in my case, the way I've got them um, sorted, is the PNG file. You can use PDF, I just find PNG easier. The first of the two in my case is the PNG version. That's the one I prefer to use. You can't accidentally modify it. Well, not so easily anyway. Now let's open our template in Publisher. But first, we need to create a document of the right dimensions. And there they are, no guesswork. They're displayed for you in that, in that template image. So select New Document and create a preset folder. I've called mine Books, and the new document is called 6x9 Cover Template. That way I won't confuse it 
with the interior because I've got the interior there called 6x9. 6x9 novel, actually. So this is the cover for the same novel. Set the new dimensions to those shown on the template. Remember we had them highlighted there? Turn off facing pages. Set number of pages to 1. Now tap the margins and bleed tab and check the settings. Fix them in place by tapping the reload icon. Remove margins and set bleed to zero. Remember this is the template. We don't need margins and we don't need bleed. It's built into the template you've just downloaded. And you tap that little reload icon. If you don't do that, then you'll lose any changes you make when you exit the document. The new document. This is the master page view. Well, once you've got everything in place, you tap create, of course, and it creates your new document. This is the master page view. There's only one master, and that's the one it creates, followed by the pages view, and that's the one we're going to use. You don't need to touch the master. It's just there because it's there. We're going to use this view. Next, on that page, Create a picture frame for the entire page. Make sure it's exactly the same dimensions. 12.520, I think that is very small print there in, in this iPad, and 9.25 high. That's easy. It's exactly the same width. Now, let's load our template. Now, select the Place tool. That's that image on the left-hand side toolbar. And locating the template, png file drop it into the picture frame now there's the one i've got selected that's the one i want the png and click open and drop it into the template it should be an exact fit check the dimensions again 12.520 by 9.250 and you should see it an exact fit now i've got snapping on so if you're actually unsure, just move it slightly and you'll see the red and white lines of the snapping bars um, come into play. But by checking the dimensions, you get it right anyway. Now, having a look at that template, think of the red and pink borders or reddish pink. It's not quite red and it's not quite pink. As non-printable areas. Not only will most of that be cut off, but you can't print in those areas. The black line all around the edge is the bleed. Anything outside that is cut off anyway. And the white areas are printable areas. The yellow area is the barcode area, and that's reserved. We'll cut that out later on, so that's where your barcode will go. Even if you've got an image there, KDP will drop a barcode over the top of it. So you just clear it right out. Now, continuing right along, this is the cover. Now that we have the template in place, let's begin our cover, front and back and spine. Begin by locking the template layers. We don't want any um, changes there. Now, I don't want to extend this tutorial by delving into good cover design, but some things need mentioning. You need a well-designed image, even if it's a simple design. Place a picture frame on the right side and line it up carefully. Note that it's lined up along the bleed edge and the dotted line marking the spine edge. So you are lined up along that fold line on the spine, which is the dotted line, and right out to the bleed edge, because you're going that'll get trimmed off, that's all right. But of course on the spine it doesn't get trimmed, so you have to be careful you're going along the dotted line. That's the fold where the where the page bends over for the cover. Place your image in the picture frame. Now this is a busy image of a possible Shanghai scene for the book Shanghai Pirates. This is a story I'm writing, but we need to put some work into it. You can't just put a picture like that in a cover. It's very unprofessional. Start by putting a gradient mask over it to take away the holiday snap feel. And you can see what I've done there. Place the gradient mask over the image and reduce opacity on the right to show the image through. Leave the white colour on the left so the image is not a clean cut on the spine. 
it sort of fades into the spine there, which is what you want. Now let's add a title to the cover. I've put an ellipsis under the word Shanghai Pirates there and modified it slightly so that it's kind of see-through. I won't bore you with outlining every step, but rather show you the first draft of the front cover. We now have the spine and back cover to do. Drag out a white rectangle to fill the spine area to the dotted lines and include top and bottom bleeds. Remember your available spine text area is only 0.270 inches in width. It has to fit to be readable. This is a very thin book. Thicker books it's slightly easier. If it reduces too much of course then KDP won't print any spine print because it's too thin. They can't get it on. That's simple. By adjusting the text and making the KDP template active, you can see I've got it active and it shows through slightly. You'll see exactly where your spine text is sitting and it must be within the white area. If it's not, KDP will reject the cover and you'll have to keep doing it until you get it right. That's quite important that one, so remember it. Now drag out a white rectangle to fill the barcode area. This will be overprinted by KDP. You can leave it off, of course. Next, drag out a white rectangle to cover the back page entirely. Watch your snapping lines to make sure you align the box carefully. There's your back page white rectangle dragged out. Highlight the barcode layer and you will see where it is. This can guide you when adding back matter. Now what I've done there but not um, showing you step by step is I dragged the barcode air rectangle layer above the back cover left hand rectangle, left, left back page rectangle, bit of a tongue twister, selected them both, gone to geometry and tapped subtract. And what that does is take out the white barcode square and leave it clear right through to the yellow barcode which is on the back cover, the back cover template. Now let's add our back page blurb. Sometimes this is about the author, sometimes a short blurb about the story. The barcode rectangle has been subtracted from the back page white rectangle to leave the barcode space clear. And now it's looking more like a cover. A nice page on the cover, the spine, and some blurb on the back. And you can put whatever else you like on the back, just make sure it falls within the white area. And there's the first draft. It's a pretty good cover for a book. Reasonably professional and certainly usable. I've seen covers a lot worse than that one. Now that's how quick that was. Just to give it a bit of, um, of a start, you can come back to it later on, of course. So that's the end of this tutorial, and thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, because only by you subscribing does this keep me going.